Good day, church family, and welcome to the LJCC update for Thursday, October the 8th. As we step into October, Mike Baumgartner and Disaster Assistance is our monthly mission emphasis for October. And so let's be sure and keep him in our prayers and the efforts that he's got going on, has been having uh, in Louisiana for the last couple of months, but particularly now as another hurricane, second or third one that is targeting uh, Louisiana is coming in. He is further east than that, I believe, in uh, in way west Mississippi, uh, but still let's keep him in our prayers. Disaster assistance is there to provide hot meals for anyone affected by a natural disaster. He's been where the forest fires have been. He's been for hurricanes, tornadoes, all of those kinds of things. Uh, in addition to those affected needing meals, there are literally thousands of people who show up to volunteer, to serve, and to help in those situations. And again, Mike's resource is a place to get easily accessible food that they don't have to spend time preparing is a great, wonderful benefit. He also has multiplied his efforts over the last few years, being able to buy enough equipment and train the appropriate people to do what he does in two locations now, which has really impacted his effectiveness. He's also very good because he's just been on the ground in so many of these situations to provide significant logistic supports and coordinating with response efforts of several other groups at the same time. He does a great work. It works very hard. It's really wonderful that the name Lake Jackson Church of Christ is associated with his work as we are a, a physical address for people to send their uh, contributions for his efforts. In addition to coordinating logistics, he also provides financial support that for people who are doing similar kinds of efforts in places that he can't get to personally. The best place to see what's going on with disaster assistance and Mike Baumgartner is to get on Facebook and find Disaster Assistance Church of Christ. He is very good about posting photographs and, and posting what's going on. And there are several people that add to those posts so you can see what's going on. So again, remember disaster assistance and Mike Baumgartner as this month continues to unfold. I wanna thank all of you for response uh, to Sunday's message. I was overwhelmed by the kind words that were spoken to me here on Sunday, as well as numerous emails and text messages. Uh, and just kind of wonderful to have people in the service and then since then want to talk about their own story and how they have walked through that process of realizing where, uh, although they don't see themselves as racist, how those systems continue to affect all of it. I'm really glad because it's not just been conversations that I've had with myself, but I've talked to many of you who the sermon has started conversations, whether it was with your children or with your spouses. I want to continue to encourage you to talk to your black friends, neighbors, co-workers about their experiences. There's nothing more valuable in this process of becoming honest with ourselves and kind of look at things more objectively than to hear from them. Please reach out to me. Uh, either by text, email, or phone call, or come by if you had any objections or concerns about the message. I would appreciate hearing from you. As we start into our prayer list today, we want to continue to give thanks that Carolyn Hunter continues to show significant improvement in Muskogee, uh, in hospital in Muskogee, and we want to continue to pray for that she'll continue to improve. 
Deborah Lee earlier this week was found unresponsive in her home. Uh, she was taken to St. Luke's Brazosport. They did discover some infection that was going on in her body. However, at this point on Thursday, she is stable and just waiting for them to release her to go home. Let's continue to remember Deborah and Zane in our prayers. We are aware that right now Cindy Yates and Candy Crest need our prayers as they are both having severe difficulties with back pain and having trouble getting uh, the, the kind of medical help that they need. Uh, we want to pray for both of them that they can both uh, have access to the help they need and that appropriate help that can bring them relief will be found. We've been praying for Maggie Stroman, and she had the first of two cataract procedures on Monday. She's home, recovering well, but continue to remember her because she's being treated uh, generally for macular de degeneration as well. April Lubke has let us know that her ear surgery, a, forgive this pronunciation, a stapedectomy, uh, has again been rescheduled for November the 11th. Uh, we're really hoping that that surgery can produce a significant recovery of hearing loss that she's experienced. Bob Aubrey has asked us to pray for his stepbrother who lives in Colorado, Dwayne Franklin, who has started chemotherapy to treat lung cancer. Also, we want to remember Dee Rambo, who's battling stage four prostate cancer that we've been told has spread into his bones. Sherry Nocken asked to pray for her daughter-in-law's father, Floyd Scott, who is struggling with COVID uh, symptoms. Uh, we got an update that he was maybe doing a little bit better, but even that is a couple of days old. So let's maybe reach out to Sherry and get an update. We want to continue to remember Nell Brown as we still don't have really good answers on what's going on with her blood issues. She's waiting results for some additional testing. And we're glad that Joanne Philo has completed her second round of chemo in her battle with cancer. We want to uh, again express our condolences to Sherman Estes's family. Uh, many of you were able to be at the services on Monday, which were really a great testimony to his life, whether it was Mr. Lewis, his friend, uh, telling us about his good heart and the way that that heart acted, but also that all of his grandchildren uh, had input into the service and, and were, it was really wonderful. It was a great blessing to be there. And, uh, I hope that you'll reach out to Barbara and the family. Well, we've got some birthdays. Uh, sorry about missing last week's update, um, so we'll have a little bit of catching up to do. Last Friday, October the 2nd, was Jamie Hunter's birthday. Liz Spencer's birthday was last Sunday, October the 4th. And then yesterday, Wednesday, October the 7th, both Jeremiah Nesbitt and Mike Patterson were celebrating birthdays. Saturday, October the 10th, coming up Saturday, we have birthday for Mike Whitaker and Kyle Davis. Happy birthday, Kyle. Hope you have a terrific day. And then Sunday, October the 11th, is Oraline Nockin's birthday, but that may not be the most significant celebration going on her as life, her life. As on Tuesday, two days ago, she and Ralph celebrated, are you ready for this? 58 years of being married. Congratulations, Ralph and Oraline. We're thankful for the testimony and witness that your relationship is. Finally, as we talk about birthdays and celebrations, uh, the Richies, Sharon and I, and Joe and Karen Phillips are really thankful, and we're excited to welcome Marshall Phillips Ritchie to the world. He, most of you I'm sure have heard, was born early on Monday morning, October the 5th. Mother and baby are home and doing great. 
Please remember to continue to check our website, visit our Facebook page, and download the Caring and Sharing. If you, for whatever reason, aren't getting text notifications, please be sure and check with the office and be sure that your number is listed correctly and that we have you on the subscription list that you want to be part of. So why don't you join with me in prayer as we close out today. Our Father and our God, we do thank you for the celebrations of these lives that are such a blessing to us in so many ways. Uh, my heart is particularly thankful for the blessing that I have in knowing uh, Kyle Davis and the smile and enthusiasm that he brings to every life that he encounters. We want to thank you for the witness and Ralph and Oraline's 58th anniversary. We are thankful for them in this church and the impact that their life together has had. We want to thank you that Carolyn Hunter continues to do well. We want to lift up these names to you, knowing that uh, they are in uh, your care, in the palm of your hand. We ask for your healing touch on all of these lives. We lift up Deborah Lee, Cindy Yates, Candy Crest, Maggie Stroman. We lift up April Lubke and Dwayne Franklin. D. Rambo and Floyd Scott. We continue to lift up Sandra Mullins and Nell Brown, Joanne Fillo, Paula Roper, Betty Stark, Danny Bryce, Helen Cole, and we continue to remember Bernice and Jack Skinner. Father, we pray that your peace and a clear sense of your presence would visit the families of Sherman Estes, the Voss family, and John Ray's family as well. Father, thank you for loving all of us exactly where we are, but, but loving us so much that you want us to grow more and more into the mind and heart of Christ. We pray that our love for our fellow man will reflect your love for us and your love for humanity. I thank you for all the conversations that have going on and are going to continue to go on about how our life and our uh, engagement with every part of humanity that you've created uh, needs to be punctuated with love, justice, and equality. We want to finally thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the way that uh, his life was such a witness to bringing your justice into every life, your care, your mercy into every life that he encountered. We thank you for the resurrection, and we look forward to the day that you will make all things new. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Thanks for listening. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless.